My name is Aiden Horn, and I'm in my 14th year at Berman. So I know pretty much everything there is to know about the school. <laughs> Quiz me. I'd like to tell you a little bit about my story. I started my Berman journey back in the good old days, 2005, <laughs> when all the worries we had was what was for snack and who got to be one later. I'm so old, when I started, the school colors were blue and yellow. <laughs> As I grew and rose to the grades, Berman became more and more like a second home to me. I know it may not seem like it by uh, how well dressed I am and my sheer amount of gravitas, <laughs> but my life hasn't always been one straight easy path. Let me take you back to before even I can remember. When I was three months old, my father had a heart attack and passed away suddenly, leaving me, my two brothers, and my mom to survive on her own. My mom's a Balshuva, and she was in the process of her own religious journey, and now she had to take three boys along with her, alone. But I dare say she did a pretty fantastic job, as you can see by how well just I <laughs> Eventually, my mom met my stepdad. They got engaged on a Friday and married that Sunday. Wow. Crazy story, but I won't get into it. <laughs> He's a great guy, but unfortunately, I still had no one to sit with and chill because my stepdad is farting. <laughs> they put their two on backwards. <laughs> and they don't eat chillin', so not like I <laughs> Growing up without a father, caused many difficulties socially, economically, but most importantly, spiritually and religiously. That's why Berman Hebrew Academy is so much more than an educational institute. The faculty and administrators at Berman helped me overcome these challenges. Yes, I think that I've been properly educated, but I've also learned how to communicate with members of the faculty, <coughs> adults, and other students. <clears throat> I've made so many amazing, impactful friendships throughout the years that have changed me for the better and turned me into a more complete person. Going to preschool and elementary school at Berman laid a crucial foundation for my Jewish education and identity. But that was just the beginning. As I entered middle school and then high school, my Judaism level shot through the roof as I started taking more intense Judaic classes and learning more and more about the religious side of my life from Gemara, Chumash, and Navi, to Jewish history, philosophy, and ethics. We delve deep into every aspect of Judaism. We learn about Judaism, but we also learn to love Judaism. In my Kodesh class with Rabbi Grossberg, we learned about the idea of the Bechir point, an individual battlefield that everybody has inside of them. We learned that every person has their own level of struggle and that it's constantly moving and shifting. This topic really impacted me because, like so many, I struggle within my own practice of Judaism. The most recent mitzvah, or struggle, for me was tzitzis. I never really wore them at all up until a little bit into this year. And now, with a little bit of help and pushiness from one of my friends, I wear them every day at school and on Shabbat. That's now conquered, my Bechira point has shifted. Learning and understanding this concept is the first step to making a change. There will be many, many more things that challenge me, and I will be able to conquer them when the time comes. That's just one of the lifelong lessons that I've received at Berman. My time at Hebrew Academy has also taught me how to be a functional, contributing member of society. The teachers I've had have been my role models and my mentors. They've made sure that I know what it takes to be a Jewish adult. While my Jewish practices are most important, I don't want to underestimate the benefit of the secular education I've received. I love the opportunity I have, had, I have had in my classes to be creative in my writing and dive into literature that has shown me a world outside of my own. Now let's jump out of the classroom, way out, over 5,800 miles out. Yes, yes, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about because nobody will stop talking about it. The mission, 10 days in the most amazing place on earth. I especially can't stop talking about it because it was my first time in Israel. <coughs> I couldn't begin to describe how life-altering of an experience it truly was. So I'll just tell you one moment from my personal experience. It was our first day in Jerusalem. After being crammed in a bus for hours, hungry and tired, we finally got to our hotel. Our bus got there considerably late than everybody else's, 
and the rest of the groups had already settled in, showered, and eaten. I went upstairs with my luggage to find out that we were in one of the smallest rooms and on the opposite side as all of our friends. We had to load the buses to the hotel before I even got a chance to eat. I was in a very bad mood. <laughs> I've heard the hotel is so amazing that people cry when they see it for the first time. But I'm not the emotional type, so I wasn't expecting anything major. We finally got there to the holiest place in the world, and I didn't feel anything. I went up to the wall, I touched it, I had a conversation with Don English, but still, I felt nothing. Now, I hate to admit it, but I'm not the best doctor in the world. But I decided to try to have the most intense, powerful, mega Shimon Esri that I could. I took a deep breath, took my three steps backward and forward, and as soon as I said the first word, I burst into tears. I continued the whole thing, struggling to get the words out, as my sobbing didn't cease, until I reached the very end. All the problems from earlier that day seemed to just fade out of existence. It's true that maybe in the moment I wasn't feeling it, but there was something inside me that was feeling it. After my 14 years of Jewish education at Berman, learning so much about Israel and so much about the Kotel, I was finally there. The part of me waiting inside for all those years, screaming, finally burst out. Not even a really bad day could stop it. Throughout the 10 days, there were so many more amazing moments and memories that will undoubtedly last a lifetime. There's no other school that puts together a trip like this. That's what makes Berman so special. I am truly, truly grateful for Mr. Dennis Berman. Without him, the mission wouldn't be possible. Let's just say it was the best field trip I've ever done. <laughs> The Academy gives us the freedom to take risks while still maintaining a supportive, loving environment. There are so many leadership opportunities at school, and one in particular that I've been involved with is Student Council. I've been the class of 2020's Vice President for all four years of high school, organizing Shabbat Shalim, activities, sales, special programs, and fundraisers for our senior trip. If you need Hanukkah candles, we have beautiful ones in the recently burned. <laughs> Another thing that makes our school so special is Berman's truly spectacular art department. I took photography for three years at the regular honors and AP levels. I hope my craft grew artistically and this past summer started a small business. And you've done the courses with the podcast. <laughs> Berman also has an incredible selection of extracurriculars. Team sports at Berman give students the opportunity to be part, part of a larger community and learn fundamental life skills like teamwork, dedication, and putting in your best effort. Sports gave me an outlet and a place to be successful when I found the classroom to be challenging. I'm on the volleyball team, and last year we completed the season with a perfect record and two banners. I'm also on the track and field team, where I throw discus and shot put. I've won two gold medals in discus and hold the school record for shot put. I don't say this to brag, but rather what can be accomplished at Berman beyond the classroom. There are so many personal kindnesses that stem from the Berman communal family. Last year, some friends and I planned a Potomac Shabbos for our grade. It wasn't school affiliated, but Mr. Berman gave me and my parents the key to his house, left for Shabbos, and let us have Friday night dinner in his basement as a kahila. He not only gave me the key, but also his trust and kindness. There are so many ex examples of this true family vibe at Berman, like this student-teacher relationship that transcends the classroom. In a heartbeat, teachers will take time out of their own lunches to help students who miss work, need a little extra instruction, or even to help with other classes or extracurriculars. Many of the Rebbeim even invite students into their own homes for Forum Sudo. For the past two years, I've celebrated Forum with my classmates in Rabbi Middleman's home. By the way, the food's out of this world. There are so many examples of this kind of warmth and hospitality in every division of the school. A Jewish education is crucial, but let's be realistic, it's expensive. <coughs> if it weren't for the tremendous financial aid and scholarships that I received, I wouldn't be able to attend such an amazing school, and I wouldn't be the person that I am today. There's only one group of people to thank, and it's you, the donors. 
I can't thank you enough, literally. From what I've heard, my father was a kind and charitable man. Maybe he would have been here tonight, sitting at one of these tables. But if he was here, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be here to share my story, show you amazing folks the man I've become, and tell every, and other people that everything turns out okay. I've been able to motivate others who suffer from personal battles or losses because of what I have been through. Despite the difficulties I've faced, my journey hasn't been a tragedy, but rather an unsung blessing and opportunity. Thank you so much for having me tonight and allowing me to thank you on behalf of all the students at Berman who thrive because of your support. Thank you.